Hey guys, we're just waiting for Lauren. Let's see, there she is. Boop. Go live. How quick that worked. All right, technology. You guys ready to ask a lot of, hey Lauren. Hey. What's up? It actually we did worked. It. <laughs> I love it when technology works. It's always a surprise to me. Oh, I know. I, I, I always, always cannot believe it that technology does this, but we're here. We're here. I know. Right here. Um, so you had a really big finale moment last night. <laughs> it was it yeah. last night. I, I don't have a sense of time anymore. <laughs> yeah, in the UK, I had I've still been quite careful about saying too much because in the UK, it only came out, I think, like in the middle of the night last night. So oh, people have had work today, so I don't know if everyone's watched it yet. And I feel obliged to the Brits and the Scots not to give everything away just yet. But I can't anyway. Can with you guys. Okay, but, um, so we'll just yeah, we'll tell been... everyone like spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it, just just watch it. Yeah, and listen. So anyone, yeah, if anyone's tuning in, we are going to talk about it all. So uh, all the spoiler stuff. night. <laughs> I know. So you, so Marceline turned into a stone cold killer, <laughs> and I loved it. So how was that for you to play? Um. Well, I, I mean, stone cold killer feels like it's like revenge and vengeful when actually I feel like it's all to do with protection Love. and it's all about protecting her family and it's this yep. instinct of responsibility and knowing that there was no one in that moment she's got a direct threat from this yeah. evil person uh -huh. and there's just no way Marcy's the kind of girl who's gonna let time take its moment and find someone else that can maybe do it for her yeah. But she takes it upon the responsibility that's sort of built. I feel like this season, sort of like from episode one, Marsley, with every episode, has been placed on with more responsibility, has found her place entirely on the ridge. Is yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's so> <laughs> I, I saw Caesar just said she's lethal. <laughs> she's lethal, thank you, sis. Um, yeah. And um, with more responsibility, that I just don't think there's any other option other than taking it on herself and doing what she felt had to be done. There was just no yeah. other option. Um, and I also don't know that it was, I don't know if it was, in, I don't think it was like a spontaneous decision. I think she takes the time that he's there to yeah. decide this is what she has to do. Um, I don't think it's impulsive, if that's yeah. you know I, mean. I think she do knows. You, do you think she was surprised that Claire couldn't do it? Or do you think she was like, I'm stepping in? No, I don't think she's surprised because I think we all know that Claire's taken an oath and she's mm -hmm. never killed and we all know that she's never killed. Um, yeah, Martin intentionally. Always, yeah, was it improv, Cesar? Cesar, <laughs> stop trolling. <laughs> stop <laughs> trolling my husband. Um, <laughs> it was, um, no, because I've always known that Marsley has always known that Claire's some sort of like white witch or yeah. has got something more to her she's not evil so much in her eyes but there's definitely more going on um <laughs> I'm 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 <laughs> <laughs> um and i just think there was there's far more going on she knows that she's got her place and if claire can't do it it's yeah. up to marsley i just think she knows there's no other choice there kind of yeah. there isn't like a oh well I'll maybe claire should do it or maybe i should wait for the guys to do it it's just the case of this is what she has to do yeah um, so speaking of Cesar, since he's on, let's talk about, um, some, one fan had a question. Will Fergus talk more next season? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Fair question. Um, I hope so. Yeah. We've spoken about it. And of course, like me and Cesar missed this year, not getting to do as much together. Um, it's obviously been amazing that marcy has got to explore who she is and her world. And I don't think we've seen that. I think this is the first season we'd seen Marcy alone and yeah. get the chance do that because you really it had been I Marcy joined the family through Fergus and we we know a lot <laughs> about Fergus and we know his background his history and we've grown up with him but yeah. Marcy we hadn't really had the chance to do that yet so yeah. I was really grateful to get the opportunity to do that but yeah like Cesar is my best mate he's my best friend like we miss talking and we miss him being there and yeah Jesus, like there's plenty of times where it would have been really helpful if he was there to help Marcy along with, with certain things that she was doing yeah and we miss like the romantic side of them a bit, um, which I yep. think you'll get more of later. Um, but yeah, of course, okay. I can't speak on behalf of the writers to know if you'll speak. But I mean, the wooden hand speaks for itself. It I does. It it does. Says I, a lot. It, I didn't know it was a wooden hand. I thought it was a copper hand. 
Interesting. Oh, we and should maybe there's something in that. That's I like Game of Thrones, eh? And we don't oh, talk that, about Game oh, of Thrones. Oh yeah, that's right. That's so Jamie Lannister. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have Jamie. to say when Marsley um killed Lionel, I felt like it was Arya King killing the Ice King. <gasps> Thank you. I'll take yep. that. I will that take that. Take it. Yeah, cuz she is the queen now. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, when I read cuz at first, I don't know what I don't know what the writer's process entirely was, but we speak throughout the whole season. Mm -hmm. And an episode, or oh, what was the episode? I can't even remember now what number it was that Brie and um, Marsley have the kitchen conversation where Brie thinks that her son Oh yeah, it was earlier in the season. Yeah. Yeah, and it's earlier and um, Marsley confesses that she has killed her father. And I, yes. when I read the script, I was like, what? Oh my God, she's killed her dad. Like, this is such a good bit of information that I didn't know about. And then you read on and you realize that it's a bit I know. psychology. And I was like, so really disappointed because cool. I was I like, no, I wanted her to like gut him. Yeah. Like, Same. I was I like, know. oh, I want to kill. Like, I feel like I'm getting a taste for that. And then I, a lot of the writers, they're always on set. So yeah. I don't know if they got that. And and there was elements of season four where I really missed Marcy's bite and missed yeah. her sarkiness that she's spawned from through the yeah. movie. Um, yeah, that I think Clearly. it was important. That, I think this season you really got a lot of a balance of this maternal, loving yep. part of the family, and don't forget where she comes from and who she is, and what yeah, she's yeah, capable of. If you know what well, I mean. Well, that's what I want to talk about is because everyone has so many questions. The Claire Marsley friendship. It's like not yeah. only mother daughter, but it's sort of like Thelma and Louise go to med school. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> and it's like yeah. um, you know, considering where they started. I mean, you know what, what Marceline used to call Claire, which I love when you say that word. What, well, here? Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> How do you do that? Well, you know, um, that's quite funny because when we, when we filmed the scene, I yeah. just said whore. I was like, that whore. And then in post, they were like, we really want it to be whore, which is like how you would normally, like you're a whore, yeah. is how you'd normally say it. And I think at the time it had just been like so heightened. I was new to the show. It was such a good moment anyway. I don't think anyone wanted to break it with um, calling her that on the boats. Yeah. Um, so it was ended up in post. We changed the like the way I said it to that. But actually, it becomes kind of iconic thing. That Honestly, I could, I could make that sing. my ringtone. Like I <laughs> like that way it's pronounced so much. We, I don't um, tend to call people that generally in, in real life. But I mean, me and Kat talked a lot about it. It was so intimidating because when I first arrived on set, I mean, cats like this, goddess, like very tall, beautiful mm -hmm. women with a lot of like very empowering energy. And I was brand new and I'm like half the height of her. And I had to, the first thing I had to say to her was that she was a whore or a witch. And I was like, she's a great star. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're then, like, I don't believe this. Yeah. And then um, we became really, really good friends. And it's been such a great journey for us to do together because obviously she's an incredible actress. And yeah, to, to not have lost. We, I mean, she used to walk around calling me a pain in the ass and how much fun that was. And we haven't lost uh -huh. the fun of it. Um, but it's also been really meaningful to get to... I mean, at first when I had to call her my ma, when I, when I saw it in the script, I was like, yeah. oh, but I'm so affiliated to Leary that that's yeah. my mom and that's yeah. where I come from. But actually, we've always, talk, we've always spoken about how Claire and Marsley are very similar, actually. They see a mm -hmm. lot of each other in each other. And I think that's why they've clashed. Yeah. Um, beyond... The history of what's happened yeah so actually to get them to bond over those similarities has been really special and we've both loved it it's been great yeah. and also just to get to hang out and work oh yeah i know i mean your dynamic is like one of my favorite on the show and uh, and the female friendships in general but let's also talk about do you think you'll ever have a scene with leary and claire and marcely and if it came down to it marcely had to save one of them who would she say <laughs> oh my god Okay, I would love there to be a scene between the three of us. That would be, Epic. oh my God. Well, that's like giving me shivers to think about what that would be like. Because Nell's a good friend as well. <laughs> Nell's like a couple of years older than me too, which is what we all found so far. I know. It's, mean, she's, it's like like, your, she's like your teen mom. <laughs> yeah, she's like my teen mom. But she gets prosthetics and everything to look a lot older. And okay. I look a lot younger on it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would, that would be amazing. I don't know. I wonder who the affiliation would be. I feel like it would be like Marcy would be the middleman that has to try and make sure that they both don't kill each other. Although yeah. I don't know that, I feel like Claire can't kill, so she's not going to go for her and she's going to be the calm one and Leary yeah. might go for her. But so, Claire, I, Claire definitely knows how to slap, so. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. But I'm like, would would she? Maybe she would. We could get a real fight going or something. If I, I like had to that. kill one of them. Yeah. If I had to keep one of them. Yeah. Like Just, it's like they're both theory. in a river drowning. Who do you save? I feel like I have to say Leary because she's blood. But <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so personally offended by that. But but like I can't. But like Leary's not. She's raised me as a single mum alone with like the, all the hardships in the world, and she's had divorces and pain. Like I still have that running through me. Like Claire's got Bree. Bree can come and save Claire. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of people would save Claire. That so let's yeah. talk about the finale a bit. Um, yeah. that was so. Um, upsetting to watch, but so powerful. So when did you first see the finale? Um, I actually only saw it a few weeks ago. Um, I got sent a link because they had to be, they were being really good um, with making sure it was right and making sure it was dealt with properly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everyone was in conversation right up until the final moment. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a while to be totally locked um, so I hadn't seen that much I actually don't really watch it I find it quite difficult to watch the show yeah. because you spend so much of your time on it and you know everything that's going to happen and you've worked yeah. so intimately with everyone that there's a weird element of well these are my friends and I don't want to see my friends having sex yeah naked, naked friends are no no i no. don't need to see sam kieran like that i've seen i know seen I, t I talked to friends. sophie i talked to sophie yesterday and she we were talking about season one like did she binge it before she got started mm -hmm. on the show and she's like yeah and i was like what was your favorite episode and she's like not the wedding episode <laughs> <laughs> no not no, the wedding no, um like, what I was watch did sophie you binge either. like they're they're good good friends there i'm like yeah. that's too no yeah i can't do it um no, it's like but seeing... I, no but i've watched um i did watch the 60s stuff because okay. it's like that was like a once in a lifetime chance to get to mm -hmm. do that stuff and i was wearing like original vintage outfits and the fittings and everything were incredible and it was it was a joyous thing to shoot despite the fact that we knew how steeped in horror and how horrible it's all sort of the undercurrents are of it yeah um, so I did watch it to see how it turned out because we didn't get playbacks or anything for it yeah Jamie wanted to keep it all really it was really improv lots of yeah. things going on was improvisation so oh really um, that I mean first yeah. of all I have a bunch of questions that I got from Twitter but people yeah. were like you really rock that 70s look um, <laughs> yeah. and uh some one fan wanted to know did you steal any of your outfits I'll, I really tried. See the white go go boots? Oh my God. I, we, before the fittings, I had said to Trisha, she'd like given me some ideas of what she was looking at. And then yeah. we got like a rail of just like all original vintage pieces. And yep. we just had a field day and, and like went through everything. And we had like little patterned two pieces and stuff that we almost went with. And then the, the yellow dress came along and it yeah. literally fit like a glove. There was no altering it done at all. And I was like, Trisha, you have to give me a pair of like white boots or something yeah. and she was like do you mean these and she'd already got a pair and they were oh, like wow she was like you can't wear them anywhere other than inside because they're original and blah blah, blah. Mm -hmm. so um yeah it was like kind of the best thing ever for Marsley because I Jamie the director the first thing he said to me was we want to try and show Marsley's personality through her clothes in the 70s and the 60s stuff because yeah we just don't get to see that at all. You can't with who she is in the 1700s because she's just so a woman of the time. You yeah. don't get the corset off. Even when I've got the pregnancy bump on, I'm wearing a corset. Like, you're just always... I, all right, we, got to, we have to talk about your super pregnancies. Like, <laughs> okay, Claire had a very good talk with you about birth control. Um, yes. Uh, shortly after you called her a whore. I can't yeah. do it. Whore? Oh, oh, say, yeah. say yeah. it the special yeah there it is I'm yeah, gonna practice yeah. later um yeah. and so Marshall and Fergus just don't know how to do that or they do know how to do that too no, well I just think they're really in love and they just love having me time with each other and they're really into each other and they're young they're like young healthy rabbits it's like, like why not good time. Yeah. yeah also marcy must just be super fertile because each time it seems to be that she has that we did just like it did become a little bit of a joke and it started to annoy me a little bit because it's like every time i was coming out someone was like what number is this what number of baby and then <laughs> after episode 
what is it, 10? 10, yeah. Where yeah, you're like giving birth to one and then had the baby and then two episodes later I'm pregnant with the next one. I was like, guys, we just took it off. Like, I know. On, what are we going to say? Well, but, is that um, so annoying for you to have to wear the pregnancy belly? Like, pretty yeah, much? Yeah, it's huge. It's, I mean, obviously, like, there's far more annoying things to be doing. Yeah. Um, and I had to do nothing like something like I had to do in the finale, but oh. um, on a small scale, yes, the bump is, it's so big. It's like carrying six it's, kids. Yeah, I'm it looks large. Petite and small. So to have something so massive engulf your entire body and then have everyone quite regularly coming around like wanting to punch it or something. Like all the guys, all the boys in the set want to do that. And oh, then, which, which boys do that? Is that Sam and Richard. <laughs> Sam and okay. Richard think it's really funny. I'm like, guys, <laughs> come on. It's a You're like, don't, under there. Yeah, don't but touch you get my quite baby. Attached. Like, you do find yourself sitting rubbing it, and then people like will offer you chairs more regularly and make sure you're all right and like make sure you've got water and give you a little <laughs> back rub and stuff, which actually becomes really nice. So it's good, but on like there'll be days sometimes where we'd shoot like an earlier sequence. Mm -hmm. And then a later or something. So my bumps would be different sizes. So I'd yeah. like come in massive and then come back in and everyone be like, whoa, where did the baby go? <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah. but, well, um, so yeah. you guys obviously have a lot of fun behind the scenes. I'm going to start taking questions soon. But um, sure. is there any behind the scenes story that you can share with Kat, Sam, Cesar that you haven't told anyone yet? Oh, I haven't told anyone yet. Well, not anyone. Like, you could tell someone. Well, there but... was a funny one. Cat put, it reminded me. Cat put a video up of... There was a day. It was, like, a really glorious day. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're just shooting a massive, like, crane sequence where they were just doing a huge wide shot of everyone. And it was all the guys leaving. Okay. And so they were all going off to Brownsville. Mm -hmm. And so everyone was there. And it was like, that doesn't always happen where we're all together, which is really fun. So everyone was there and... I had my little baby Joni, who was four months old and was okay. so cute and small and like was quite happy to just sit on me all day. And then Robbie, who plays our little boy, Germain, like, yeah. he's insane. Amazing. Best actor yeah. on set. Yeah. Sure. Everything he does is so Yeah, real. we're going to talk about him next. Yeah. And then he was running around like wild, but like the chaperones were kind of like, she's quite good just staying on you can you just like keep a hold of her we'll get mm -hmm. to the chair in between takes and I was like yeah, yeah yeah great and then um it was like more helpful so she wouldn't wake up and then at one point she did start to wake up and me and Robbie were like oh my and I was like pregnant baby one arm one in the other and I was like what do we do and Robbie was like why don't we sing to her and I was like okay Robbie what should we sing and oh. we came up with a song that was just like you tiny 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 baby and it went on and on and on for hours and robbie and i tell them down your chaperone shut up says art um, he's um, still here he's still, he's still here watching, yeah and the the baby was like super into the tiny tiny baby song until the point that she really wasn't anymore and she burst into tears and oh. all you can hear is cesar going I mean, if you were calling me tiny too, I'd probably cry. So I don't know what you expect. And I, I like, like I like yeah, that fr that French accent. That's excellent. Yeah, thank you. I've had years I tried to, to practice. Get Sophie to do a Scottish accent, and she was like, "No, they'll crush me. They'll <laughs> crush me." <laughs> yeah, we would. We would. That's Cesar what I got. Hate Cesar. I would like to think loves it, but I'm sure probably hates my accent. Uh, we have a game that oh, no, I know I should I shouldn't start embarrassing myself. We have a no, game no, do that it, do I'll. It. Like if he's watching, if we're if we're hanging out, he and he, like when we're in South Africa filming, he'd watch French football, and mm -hmm. um, it would be the commentators going across, and it would be French commentators, and uh -huh. he'd be like, "What do you hear when you hear that?" And I'd be like, "Oh, okay, I'll they speak, and I'll speak with them," and yeah. I'd be like, "Oh, and he was like, oh, "Okay, that's good, yeah, yeah, yeah," but it was totally gibberish. It was weird. But I would um, love for you to. I would love for you to recap an episode of Outlander in that voice. In French, yeah. I'll yeah, do it one French. day. No, don't. <laughs> I told, sorry, so sorry. You're behind, but I told the story. Yeah, French. it would be like, I would call that French-ish, not French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, so let's take some questions here. Oh, someone wanted to know, do you want Kat to direct an episode? Yeah, I would love that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think she'd be amazing. She's, she knows everyone so well. She knows the crew mm -hmm. so well. She knows how the story and the show runs and um, the sort of 
energy and atmosphere that the show needs. Um, mm -hmm. So I think she'd be amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And she's incredibly smart as well. So and creative and she's got great taste. Yeah. And she'd make all the women front and center. And yeah. Cesar, because Cesar's got great taste and is French and just quite cool. I think I think we'd all be the ones that she'd put as her mains for that. Yeah. For maybe that. maybe she'd yeah. let um Fergus talk. Like for one line. Maybe she'd let Fergus talk. <laughs> Just one line. Um, wait, so I love that scene between Claire, Marceline, and Brie. Um, can you talk a little bit about like female friendships? Because I know that originally they wanted Brie and Marceline to kind of be at odds, but you guys kind of fought for it to be a positive female friendship. Yeah. Um, so I actually hadn't got... Um, Sophie felt there was a bit of a vibe more and um I had spoke to me about it that I that there was an element of jealousy that they were trying to play. Um but we then all spoke about it, yeah, and basically we're like, let's why don't we go for like the let's support and love each other and yeah. um like unite together because there aren't that many women in Outlander. There aren't that many of us yeah. to channel that vibe and to um be those women. So I think it made a lot of sense that we try and go for that angle. And yeah you know really care for each other and um be i don't know there's only like four of us really leading the whole thing so yeah it would be a shame to not i guess like there's enough conflict elsewhere that yeah i think i think, I think also when leary comes on next season since you and i basically wrote that scene yeah, yeah. then you can have some good female conflict but but the yeah. rest of them need to get along yeah yeah and there's also like there's so much conflict going on elsewhere and it's almost the more it's almost easy to make mm -hmm these women hate each other. It would be a really easy thing to do. So it's much more interesting that them not really knowing each other and having to have lived together in this yeah. weird time love each other instead. I quite like it. Yeah, I, I do too. All right, should we take some questions? Because they're really cool. While yeah. I'm looking at the questions, oh, this question box never works well. Isn't that fun? Um, while I'm looking, ooh, um, it's up, it's up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What is your favorite episode of all the shows i always tend to go back to fergus and marsley's wedding just because oh, yeah. it was so much fun yeah to shoot it it was like we were in the middle of south africa on a beach in a little jungle and it was mm -hmm. like all the cast were there it was a night shoot so it was really romantic and it was intimate and yeah. Me and Cesar really got to know each other at that point and we'd spent so much time, just the two of us, mm -hmm. um, because we had to. And Sam and Kat were there and it was just like like beautiful. It was like a real wedding. And it yeah. just, everyone felt excited that night. It had been quite a long, hard shoot at that point. And yeah. like, I remember all of costume and makeup being all really excited and um, I was I was like my hair down and that was really cool. And yeah. I don't know, it just felt really real and romantic and like the beginning of their life together and it felt like the kickoff yeah of like what was to come and like the big things to come for them um, and i'm sorry i'm laughing someone just said fergus's rights are human rights they really <laughs> want him to talk is he is he feel human when he's got a wooden hand yeah i don't know yeah oh that's a, yeah, no, that's a white burn right there <laughs> um wait so are there any funny south africa stories that you can share with cesar sam cat from behind there's the scenes. so many stories but there's so many i would not be allowed to tell oh that's what i think <laughs> so we did it was great i mean it was like we we used to just be like we're living the life it was so amazing i think we took for granted like the hot weather and the gorgeous oh. like scotland you're in like the mud and the snow and the wet constantly yeah even we did get some summer this year but last at south africa it was like we were living by the ocean we were filming mm -hmm. at the ocean a lot we were yeah in this incredible setting and in the warmth and I mean there were times where there was one day where it was like 38 to 40 degrees mm -hmm. and which is like I don't know what it is American but that's um in UK very hot and we were filming a Scotland sequence so it wasn't to be Jamaica so we all had to be like in our layers and in our wool and everything yeah and they they had to end up strapping ice packs to like the inside of my thighs and my back and like my tummy and everything so oh, I wow. slow down because you can't come out the corsets because you're so tight and you're in like yeah. it's such a process to get in and out so um strapping ice packs to like stop you from fainting was the point we were all at and then all the oh. like there was loads of runners running around with umbrellas everywhere yeah and there'd be lots of times where you'd be like i'll just take the umbrella don't worry and they were like no no no, no. 
like we all have to be seen to be doing something and this is a really fun easy job so we're just like because we can hang out and just hold it so like, like, please let me just hold this umbrella yeah so it was great yeah um okay let's see another question here oh we've been playing a game with everyone called um mary quarantine social distance so i'm gonna give you three choices all okay. right uh cesar john bell richard rankin you get to marry one of them socially uh, quarantine with one of them and then socially distance from oh so like socially distant walk yeah like they no no um well they have to you, go you know, away they're, they're, they have to go away but like in a protection sort of way oh to protect them yeah, I guess. I mean, if we want to be nice. Okay, like if I'm going to be nice about it, then that makes it a little bit easier because I would marry Cesar because that married. makes the most sense because we've done that and we know how yeah. to do it. We, we do that anyway. Uh, <laughs> Richard I'd quarantine with because he can play guitar and he's funny. He's very yeah. funny. And um, he would drive me nuts, but we can tell each other that that would happen. So it would be okay. Okay. Um, and he could teach me guitar more than I can Ooh. already play. I play yeah. a bit, but he could, he could go further. And I feel like I need to need to get better at that mm -hmm. um, John Bell I'm going to use the phrase because we need to protect John Bell at all costs Sean, John Bell because we need to have John Bell so we need to protect him so he can distance but I love you John Bell <laughs> <laughs> all right and, and then we'll play about... one more uh Sam Cat and Sophie Ooh. oh my god okay marry Cat. okay quarantine with Sophie socially distanced from Sam because we need to protect Sam. Although Sam can protect himself. He's huge. He can. So I he don't can. know. I'm not, I feel like, I feel like I'm, what would he give me in quarantine? He's, he's my friend. Like, I think everyone I know that's watching, they yeah. know what they would get from him in quarantine. And I don't want that. So. Whiskey? Whiskey. Yes. Let's see whiskey. Yeah, you get some of that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, what, what do you mean? They know what they get. Would he make you work out a lot? Yeah, maybe. Or like, because everyone loves him. Oh yeah, everyone, that's true. Everyone would like love to see him doing a bit of gardening with his with his muscles out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I wouldn't want that. That's what I'm yeah, saying. You're like, I don't care about that. You're like, I'm not into naked gardening. I'm not gonna do that. Not from him. No. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's go to another question here. Um, Marina asked some of some of everyone's favorite moments have been the scenes with Marcelli and Claire, what has been one of your favorite moments between them? And do you have an off screen story with Kat you can share? Oh my goodness, I'm sure we can. Um, I think one of my favorites would definitely be the autopsy because that felt like the kickoff of their whole time together. And mm -hmm. this like merging of souls to be this like unit in the surgery. Um, and the I think like, is the turning point for their relationship of saying we trust each other we're going to do this together we now have a secret together that was is really big and we can't tell anyone so we're in it together now yeah. um, and that just felt really big for me and that felt um really important for the two of us we rehearsed that scene prior to shooting it like normally the way it'll work is we'll just be on set you'll get a quick mm -hmm. rehearsal you'll have done your work separately and then you'll go but for some of the big stuff we'll rehearse like a few days or weeks before and we did that with it and really um sort of delved into what it meant for the two of them and it being a really big decision for Claire to choose Marcelli, especially mm -hmm. for Brie who I'm sure would be her initial thought but Brie as in like for wanting that sort of relationship and who she would trust in telling yeah. everything but um, yeah. Brie can't handle that side of the world she's great at many things but that sort of being a bit squirmy and that realm of of the world she's not so into so yeah um, it was really special and then that day on set was just really funny and silly because we were so giddy with it was so heightened the whole yeah. time that anytime anyone cracked or fucked up it was absolutely brilliant and hilarious and yeah. she had so much dialogue to learn and also had to keep a really straight face with me and I had to really go for her um that it just was like giddy and funny all day and it took all day to shoot it so it was like I don't know 14 hours or something yeah. doing it so um, uh, when you guys have scenes together, who who would you say breaks first? Oh, that's hard. My initial thoughts are like me, Kat, and Richard, I would mm -hmm. say would be like, see, Richard's a wee bit better at holding it together and like keeping your eye. Mm -hmm. I I crack pretty badly, so yeah. does Kat. And Kat, will, they're like, 
Sam actually can be like that too sometimes. He can be quite funny, but I think he tries to hold it a bit more. Me and Kat, I think, are a bit more, like, will fall. Like, you, you can tell straight away yeah. for a bit of track. Yeah. And then and who, Jamie, so, who brings you back? Like, who's like, come on, guys, we got to work? No like, one. Everyone just finds it really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Me and are quite good at being like, all right, come on, come on, come on. We got to do it, we got to do it, we got to do it. Like, we had a really hard day. We shot a scene, I think, is in, like, and it's like on the DVDs or something. It's a secret scene uh -huh. um, that I think will come out at some point. I'm not sure when, but it was a really, really hard day. It was it like it was thunder and lightning, and we're shooting outside all day in snow, and it was like winter, and it was just it was just a horribly tough day. And we kept like getting a bit mad in terms like we we get really wired and crazy, and the two mm -hmm. had to like pull each other back and like high five and keep going and tell each other, being like, "You're really good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. No, you're great. No, you're great." <laughs> And then keep going. So everyone, um, like, everyone can you talk it. to us? Someone just asked, "What was the most disgusting thing during filming?" Can you tell us about that day on set with the maggots and what happened? <laughs> yeah, the maggots were yeah disgusting. They were. I was like, "What kind of job is this that we do, where mm -hmm. we have maggots as our co-stars?" Um, yeah. <laughs> but how well, and in, in more than one episode, I was like, "Why yeah. is season five well, the so worst obsessed part, with maggots?" Yeah, the worst part was that they came on set and they weren't washed so they stank really Ooh. badly and everyone was like what the fuck is that smell and then cat <laughs> was like have they been washed like you harvest maggots from dead flesh and that's dead. the only way that they can be found and everyone was like oh no they have not been washed and we were like mate someone do that now so someone went and washed them and they came back and it was my job to hold them all day because i walk into the scene holding them Ew. So then Kat takes them, Claire takes them out of the bowl into yeah. Jamie's wound. So I just had to sit and you can hear them like crackle. Mm -hmm. They're wriggling all over. So yeah, it was disgusting. It was quite funny. Like it, 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 it wasn't funny to start and then it got funnier. Yeah. The longer you like sat and were like, what are we doing? This is so I know when, when she put those on Sam's legs, did he get grossed out by that? No, he found it quite funny because they, the, they would like wriggle off and like run away. Um, because you were shooting the whole scene and because it's not real they're going on to like prosthetics oh uh, okay, they just okay. run away they don't stick and eat it well they can't eat it so um yeah he you know he was quite good he was quite yeah. solid with it yeah i know it, quite, it looked so gross so gross. yeah it was it was um okay i'm pulling up another question um sarah wants to know um, Marceline has uh, developed all these great new relationships, Brianna, Claire, Young Ian, any particular cast member that you love working with that you haven't gotten to work with before? Uh, I only got to work briefly with Duncan um, okay. for Marissa and we got a bit to do in season four and yeah, some in season five, but I loved working with him. He was, he's just like such a godfather and has is such a phenomenal actor and is hilarious yeah. as well so yeah um and we're quite similar and that someone tweeted me today saying like marcy's murta point two and i was like i will take that um <laughs> in terms of protecting everyone i was like yeah yeah um so murta he's good jacasta yeah um me and maria are really good friends actually we we chat all the time and yeah i don't know what that was but she we didn't really get to work together at all yeah um, and I absolutely love her. David Berry as well, very close with David Berry. We're all really close. Like David's a really, really close friend, despite uh, we were in one scene in the drinking scene together, but we've known each other for years. Because yeah. you meet at like press events and whatever yep, else yep. And, and things like that. Um, so, so basically yeah, you, want, you want to work with everyone. <laughs> yeah, Richard and I hadn't done much. In fact, we yeah. hadn't done anything. That was our first scene together. But again, we're already very good friends. So yeah, it was great. And we're like, I'd love to do more with him. He's he's a phenomenal actor. I think Richard's really, really, yeah, a really special. I've, I knew about Richard before any of the other yeah. cast because he was a Scottish actor and like had been around. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, they're. I, mean, I feel like great. Um, you and Richard can maybe sing a duet. I mean, everyone seems to be doing that, so why not? Yeah, why not? I'm a better singer than Richard, I reckon. I need to like pull him up on that. Nah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could do that. I'll suggest. He can it. play the I guitar. You can sing, and then you yeah. can teach each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. He told me I play, when I played guitar once that I was playing out of key, and I definitely wasn't. So I'm not sure what his ear is. I don't know how good yeah. he said. He says he's good, but I mean, someone should challenge it. We'll see. I think I it. think you guys should do an IG live together where you um we you, we sing. Yeah, where you sing and we can tell you who's better at content. what. Yeah. <laughs> <I know>. Um. <laughs> 
Who is the funnier co-star? Who is the funniest co-star? I can't read. Me. Me. That's Definitely. what I've heard. That's what I've heard. I, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> yes. if, you can't, if you can't pick yourself, who's the funniest? Uh, Richard's really funny. Richard's absolutely hilarious. He's very okay. dry. And I think I go, I think. I mean, Cesar, to be fair as well, me and Cesar laugh constantly. We're just giggling yeah. with little kids all the time. And he makes, we have now got very similar sense of humor and like underlying language that we we have with each other because we're so yeah. close. Um, so sometimes it'll just be like a little look with Cesar and we're like, oh my God, I know. I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about. And everyone else is like, I don't get it. What? I think we are particularly best friends on the cast. Yeah. And people do look at us sometimes. Like I sometimes feel sorry for new cast members or like, people coming in for a couple of days because the two of us are, are super so weird and funny with each other. And they're like, what is with them? <laughs> You're like, what's um, with all these inside jokes? We feel yeah, so left yeah, out. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, so yeah. I want to talk about your podcast. She's a wreck. Um, yeah. I listened to an episode of it. It's so great. Who oh, are some you. of your future? Wh why did you decide to do it? And how did it come about? And who are some of your future guests? Cool. So why I decided to do it, I kind of, I there's a radio station in the UK called BBC Radio 6 and it's all your sort of um, off kilter bands, new mm -hmm. bands not your top 40 type of music um, yeah. and I, my dad introduced me to it a few years ago and I'd always film wise I was like I just sort of noticed basically in my 20s that loads of the films I've been watching, loads of the albums I've been listening to had all been men and it just became apparent yeah. to me as a woman in the industry in the entertainment industry that I actually didn't know my female influences particularly mm -hmm. so I thought how cool would it be to talk to some of the coolest women about their yeah. female influences and I'm also a fiend for a recommendation so I'm always asking people like what to read next what to listen to yeah. what to watch as are lots of people so I was like I wonder if we could combine the two and have a whole mesh of things so it basically is talking to some of the coolest women of our time about the albums, films and books by women that have most influenced their life. Um, and so we've had incredible people. I, I couldn't believe, like, I asked Ellie from Wolf Alice, the lead singer of Wolf Alice, and yeah. she said yes yeah, straight away. And I was like, oh my God, you're one of the biggest rock bands in That's the world. That's so exciting. And like a bit of a minority doing what you're doing. And she was so cool. And We've got, um, this week we have Polly Bennett, who's like the movement director on film sets yeah. for like everything massive. So she just did The Crown, all of the lead characters in The Crown and the new oh. Princess Diana and everything. She taught Princess Diana how to be her. She taught Remy Malik how to be Freddie Mercury. She taught, yeah. uh, she's currently teaching Austin Butler how to be Elvis for the new Baz Luhrmann Oh my um, gosh, that's so cool. And she literally like, it's a it's a job I don't think anyone would know really exists, but it's so fascinating what she does. She yeah. goes in and transforms actors and people into real people and yeah. moves a set and she's worked in theatre loads, so hers is really cool. We've got, coming up next week, we've got someone called Liv Little, who okay. is the coolest she's a she's the founder and ceo of um a magazine called galdem which okay. is a huge magazine here and it's now massive globally everyone mm -hmm. should check it out um for um focusing on women of color and non-binary people and oh, nice. it is she's basically created like an empire for herself mm -hmm. and she's like in her mid-20s and is one oh. of the most successful so entrepreneurs and she was in forbes 30 under 30 this year um, okay She's unbelievable. And then we've actually just had, I, I can't really talk about it because I surprise everyone every week, but someone that deals with bombs in the UN has just said yes. So oh, that's a woman. that's amazing. So that's going to be really cool um, and weird. And I think I've got an idea where at some point mm -hmm. in, the, in the future, where it comes to future series, because we're going to do it series by series. Yeah. In the future, I'll have men as well speaking about their female influences and we'll get Cesar on and any of the yeah. boys and we'll we'll do it with the guys as well because it's not about not loving the men yeah. of course will you change it just... to he's a wreck no it will just be because we're still recommending the women so it'll oh, be maybe okay. more of a mix it won't be just men oh, i like, like that that's a good we'll idea mix them in. yeah so oh, the guys will nice. recommend women that have influenced them because i feel like that's important that we hear about that as well yeah um, but i'm sure it'll evolve and it's it's been absolutely phenomenal thank you to everyone that's listened like I can't believe how well it's gone yeah um I'm so proud and pleased and 
it's been great. Yeah, I know. Well, oh, we're getting so many questions. So people want to know, I don't think you know this, but is season six, like, when do you think you'll go back? Best guess? Honestly, I have no idea. We don't know. Okay. We genuinely don't know. We've been told nothing. We, we, there were dates and then there's not been dates and then there's been dates and not dates. So it would be silly of me to try and predict because it would be a prediction. I really, I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, it will happen at some point. Yeah. But no one knows anything at the moment, do we? That's what's so weird about this time. I know. Everything's bizarre. Yeah. It's it's yeah. going to be such a different environment, too. Because is everyone going to be wearing masks or? That's it. And I think there's a lot of talk about CGI. So that there, there aren't so many massive crowd scenes and things like oh. that. CGI and that sort of stuff. And there was jokes going around um, on like I've got WhatsApp groups of different things I've been in. And I was actually filming. It's so annoying because I was filming a, a different series at the beginning of this year and it was all to be announced and it hasn't been announced yet so I can't yes. talk about it oh. but um because we don't know when it's going to air and things now but it's where we've shot it um but that group of actors and crew and everything have been saying that there's lots of letters going around being like they might quarantine and house casts together so oh it'll be like the real world or the something thing. <laughs> and everyone was like well it's gonna have to be like penthouse suites for all of us because no one's going to be able to live with each other for no. too long periods of time so, no not at all um, no so i honestly like it's the whole face of it's all going to change it's 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 so weird i don't know how it's going to work i hope i hope it's all right soon could you imagine like what if all of your outlander co-stars and you had to live together for for <laughs> three to four months so, well, I mean, South Africa was not unlike that. We were all in the okay. same complex of apartments. Everyone had their own apartment in this one spot. So it was like living in a mini, mini, mini village with each uh -huh. other. So me and Cesar were like at each other's houses every day. And okay. Kat as well, like Kat was having parties and that like, we'd all go and climb mountains together and that sort of thing. And it was amazing. It was so fun. But to live in one house, I think I'd kill them. I think I'd kill anyone. I kill, oh, yeah. I, I don't, you I need your own space. It especially yeah. during this time um yeah wait someone said ba, 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 where'd that go um oh do you have a group chat with your co-stars yeah we've got multiple group chats yeah there's yeah. like various who's... ones that started and finished and okay yeah. who's the main group chat you're in like every day oh not not that you my family your favorite my family one i'm in every day my mom is a big whatsapper they're okay. the family one's always going off I've got the people I trained at, um, I did uh, the National Youth Theatre in the UK um, and we have a group and that was five years ago that we all came together and we're always talking um, like it's constant to be honest there's like most of them it's like constant they just never stop yeah, yeah. so you're always in weird contact where's my, who's on, the, on my phone I could have checked yeah who's the biggest texter in your cast good question John is John quite a thick texter. John's quite a texter. Okay. Me and Cesar speak every second day, probably on the phone. Oh, nice. So we text a lot. Yeah. yeah. We're always. Have you talking. been Have you been FaceTiming and um, talking on the phone with people a lot more since quarantine? Yeah. So like me, Kat, Sophie, and Maria, Jocasta, Claire, Bree, and Marsley all had a girls' drinks like a week ago, and That's had like, amazing. <laughs> everyone was in different parts of um, the UK and the world and whatever and we all chatted for ages and caught up and saw each other and it was so nice. It was yeah. so, <laughs> Katrina had her tequila and I had my mint tea because I was oh, all wow. drinking. She just went for the so, hard stuff, right? <laughs> she's, yeah, she's a, she is a stone cold girl. Um, so yeah, we like, everyone's chatting all the time. We're all actually good friends. We don't know each other at all. <laughs> I know, you must miss each other. What are you gonna, when you get back on set, what's the first thing you guys are gonna do? Like hug everyone, if we're allowed to. <laughs> Hug um, hug you might need to right? like wear something like protection for hugging. Yeah, I wonder what that'll be like if we'll be able to hug. Maybe we won't. I don't if know. If not, we'll have to come up with some like air handshakes. Yeah. It's like some Sophie like, and I weird. talked a little bit about what love scenes will be like in a post COVID <gasps> world on Outlander. It's gonna. Yeah. You'll hear I, about it later. I. Yeah. No idea. I thought of it that as well. No idea how that's gonna work. Maybe oh, there'll be none. Maybe that's I, Outlander's no more. 
<laughs> I have to, yeah, Outlander can't work with social distancing. It's just no. not a possibility. Yeah. Um, wait, someone said, and I'm asking this only because I want your reaction. Is Sam as good looking in person as, as we think he is? You guys, this is a feminist chat. Sam has a great brain. We're going to talk about that. Um, he has a great brain. And um, huge. Yeah, he's very good looking. He's a great looking guy. He's a hunky man. Is that what you want to hear? He's not ugly in person. They don't Photoshop him. Yeah. He's a hunky man who she does not want to garden with. I don't know. And I don't Ever. want to see him as hunky. He's an intelligent, kind, smart, funny man. Yeah. Wait, there so I have go. a question. You know, you had said before you, you don't watch the episodes because it's also weird to see your friends naked. But some of the most beautiful shots, like, let's talk about the finale a little bit. That yeah. last shot in the finale is, is amazing. Did you watch that or do you, are you like, oh, it's and the, Of everyone panning out. And it yeah, the, the aerial shot of them. Yeah, so what, yeah, I have, have I seen it? I'm sure I've seen it. I, um, I, it's cat, I, it's basically Cat and Sam like entwined together. Oh, it's them standing on the on the porch, isn't it? And then it no, no. Away from... Oh, af it's after the porch. It's like they're in bed. There's an aerial shot of them. They're super naked, but it's like a very oh, intimate yes. scene. I see the one you're talking about. Yes, 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 yes. And she's hold she he's holding her. Yeah, yeah. I have seen it. it's gorgeous. Yeah, I have, seen that. So, I have seen that. It's really well yeah. done. Stunning. I think this yeah. this season of Outlander did a good job showing a marriage where there's intimacy but not it's not ne necessarily sexual yeah and that's it and i think that they were really careful not to make it that because it would feel so wrong i think after what's happened to claire yeah to go further with that sort of thing and it would feel very gratuitous and it would feel very like we're just giving people what they what they want and actually i think if we had done that if they had done that i think people would probably be upset because you would go yeah. that's not that's not real that isn't probably isn't what would happen I know there's I'm sure many different ways in which you would react but yeah I just don't think that feels realistic yeah I saw situation. on Twitter that people were saying in the books it's written quite differently um and I'm glad they didn't do it according to the books no offense yeah, to was, how that yeah. was written but yeah I um I think they yeah. like struck the perfect combination of how yeah Kat was yeah. super involved I think and like if, if she was made to me comfortable and yeah and was able to say what she wanted to say I think so yeah I think it was um I think it was really well handled that yeah scene, definitely. how how was it having Kat as a producer on set for for you guys I know she's been very involved but was it nice having um like one of your friends who can advocate for you guys yeah I mean she's always done that to be honest like Kat's all both of them Kat and Sam have always been very supportive and always listened out for all of us and and it honestly don't feel like too much had changed at all mm -hmm. with it um i i didn't feel like they got any better because they were already great if you know yeah. what i mean like i didn't feel unsupported anyway to then suddenly feel supported so yeah and if ever there was stuff we knew we could go to them anyway yeah um, so as younger people and newer cast members as well and um, they've always been phenomenal yeah um, do they boss you up around on set any more than usual? Or? No, nah, they know, they know not to do that. Everyone, that's the thing about actors though, like you don't touch someone else's part. You don't, like, you don't tell someone else how to do their part. You don't yeah. comment on that. Like you can comment on what you're doing together. Yeah. But you can't, you can't tell someone else how to be. <laughs> I know. Could you imagine? That would be no. the worst. Um, okay. So should we take a few more questions? I feel like people Let's, are going to yeah. get mad at me, but it's hard to get in here. Um, yeah, cool. If you could get, da, 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 please. <laughs> Someone wants an Outlander Instagram cast, uh, Outlander cast Instagram live. Okay, we'll work on that. Yeah, um, work on that. Who do you yeah. miss the most in your cast right now? That's such a, that's a tough question. That is a tough question. Yeah. Probably Cesar. We are best friends. Like we yeah. hang out together. We go out together after every day on set. We have a, we've, we have like multiple rituals that we'll do because we're both flying in when we film in Scotland. We're both flying in from France and London, from mm -hmm. Paris and London. So that's where I live and he's in Paris. Yeah. So we always get to the hotel together and like we'll go and have dinner and we have the same place that we go and the same table that we sit at. And like we talk Aww. to the same waiter and we get off and get the same food. And like we have our stuff that we do and we're, we're genuinely very close friends. Um, oh, nice. So you're so, like a platonic so, marriage in a way. Yeah. 
totally yeah awesome. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we know everything about everything so yeah probably him so uh so some other people asked uh what have you learned from your co-stars and i'm gonna name a few sam what have i learned from sam yeah um i would say sam's very good on set at having a he's got a really balanced way of being so if he doesn't feel like something's going the way it should be in a scene he's got a very calm and intelligent and positive not overbearing way of um trying to sort it out and make sure that everyone's comfortable and that everyone's happy and that everyone knows what they want to do and i think when i was newer to the set i hadn't done mm -hmm. that much screen work and i knew collaboration but when it came to screen there was just like an intimidation of that sort of that world I learned mm -hmm. sort of his technique was quite effective and yeah. working smoothly um so yeah probably that all right uh any ridiculous story about Sam Sorry. <laughs> ridiculous story that you're allowed to share <laughs> yeah let me think uh less of a story just like he whenever he gets kilt on he loves to like get his leg out <laughs> Whenever I've got, whenever he's got his coat on, I'll end up trying to get a photo of everyone. And he'll like to just like make sure he's got his wee leg out. Show um, a little leg. So I think he's a bit of a show off. I think that's all it is. He's a secret, quiet, secret show off. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know, have you spoken to Sam? Okay, I'm going to look for other questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. We answered that. Okay. Uh, ooh, there we go. Um, what have you learned um, from working with Cap? What have I learned from working with Kat? Kat really commands a set. I remember thinking that when I saw her, she really commands it. Um, I think Kat's really good at the, the, it's serious and it's work, but also having a good time and having fun. And she's very good at welcoming people in. I think I remember mm. feeling like she really tried to welcome me in when I joined. And okay. I was new and I was young. And I now like to think that I would try and do that with everyone else coming on. Cause we, I yeah. know the show so well now. I know everyone on set, you know your crew, you know every every actor, and it can be really intimidating. Yeah. So I think I learned probably that it, to try and make people feel comfortable and welcome. Yeah. yeah. Were you intimidated by her or anyone at first? Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. Cat especially, probably more than yeah. anyone else. Because I didn't know the show. I hadn't, I didn't, I wasn't a fan yeah. of it at all. I'd, I'd been binge watched for my audition yeah, most of it. I think I watched every set. I only had time to watch every second episode, so I was very confused okay. when I actually came to the end because I'd missed so many like bits yeah. of it. And I'd done Wait, it did you way. did you watch the wedding episode? I think so. Oh, okay. I can't remember now. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I remember bits of it. So it was that was like three years ago. So I'm like, yeah, yeah it was a while ago. Did. Yeah, um, but sh yeah, that um, when I walked on set, I just remember my first day. Like absolutely terrified and the first thing I had to do was walk in and call her a witch and a whore and I was like great I have please don't a please don't say low. whore the regular way only say <laughs> the yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah yeah there so I just um, get a chance. so should we take um so this is great people I, I can't tell you how many questions we're getting right now are you are you good on time yeah we're fine we're fine. Okay. Um okay so do you feel that having Sam and Kat as producers this season um, changed the show from last season? No, I wouldn't say it changed the show. I just think it, um, sorry, I don't think it changed the show Oop. There. so much because I think they know uh, the environment and the world and the rhythm that it runs at anyway. So that's not really the, the point. It was working, so they weren't there to change it so much. I think it was just, it's just always helpful to have people that are within like almost like bridging the two teams of like the behind the scenes and the in front of camera it's really helpful to bridge the two together and Sam and Kat like are the faces of the whole thing and really are there every day all day in it yeah. all so it's not they really should be in, in the conversations and it makes a lot of sense that they are so I think yeah. it's, I think it's really right and it works um yeah yeah Someone, someone just said, um, you guys have an hour limit for an IG live, which really put oh, well like, done. A, a, like pressure on six minutes left. We have six minutes left, guys. We'll do this. We can do this again. I mean, quarantine's long. Yeah. Yeah. Quarantine <laughs> is long. <laughs> it is. It's so long. 
All right, let's see here. I'm going to try and get some, give, give me some good last I think last actually what you can do is you can come off it and then just go straight back on. That's what, and you know what? I think we can do that because we have a big audience here who still wants to hear from you. If, yeah, if you're we down do for that. that. Yeah, we can do it a bit longer. Yeah. Should, we, should we go off it now and then come back on? Okay. Okay, okay. everyone, we're going off for a second. Everyone we're stay back. tuned. We're, we're going to be here right now. We'll be like a okay. second. Okay. All right. You have to end it, I think. I'm going to end it. Here she comes. Yeah. Oh, take two. All okay. right. I had to add our first part to IGTV. It's just very complicated. Oh, of course. Imagine you deleted that. that would be yeah, weird. I know. Every do you can you imagine? I would get I did, I did that. I did that. I mean says I did one and my phone died just yeah. as I came off, so it didn't save. Yeah, I'm so. gonna turn my volume up. Sorry, sorry for the shakiness here, guys. Um, okay, let's let's get back to the questions. Oh look, everyone's back with us. <laughs> um, Hi everyone. Okay, what was your favorite scene in season five that was not your scene? Ooh, good question. Okay, let me rethink. Season five, that's not my scene. Um, horrible to say it, but Mercy dying wasn't my favorite scene, but it was amazing as a yeah. scene. It was an amazing thing to watch. I also thought maria singing the lament jacasta singing the lament was really special mm -hmm. yeah um did you guys film a, a funeral with all of you there and that got cut yeah we did actually yeah i'm not sure what happened yeah. with that like you don't tend to be told of, of cuts but yeah we did we shot one with all of us and um, but i think yeah. it sort of makes sense um for it to be jacasta i think that's on her story at the time and mm -hmm. and it makes sense and then we're with jamie later um so i understood why they did it yeah yeah um so sophie said that your your on-screen kids are perfect and well behaved <laughs> um so people want to know more about working with robbie and i know you already told one story anything else yeah so robbie is the best hold on let me just figure this out robbie's okay. the best actor on set for sure he's yeah. so funny and real and um he would always just like he would do like from the moment he started his dad his mum and dad were always there and they were lovely as well but he would like at the wedding scene mm -hmm. he, it was new and it was like he was new to it all but he's he's like a little firecracker in a five-year-old's body yeah and like richard i remember was he'd met richard before yeah and then richard came in in costume and was walking down the aisle and we were all meant to be like clapping and all dead excited about uh, Roger the coming down the aisle and Robbie's running around screaming, who's that guy? What's his hair about? And what's his wig? Is he wearing a wig? And we were like, oh, what? <laughs> You're like, yes, you're right. he's got lovely hair. Lovely. And Cesar actually does, and him and Cesar bonded really quickly and done yeah. an incredible job with him. And um, a lot of what you can see, actually, if you watch closely, you can see he's like just going a bit nuts and running around like a proper little kid. And yeah, we just sort of have to let him do that, and, and yeah. it's all very real. Everything you're seeing with us is quite real, um, because he's so he's such a nutcase. But he's yeah. Does, does he ever him. tell you how to do your job or anyone? No, but he's incredibly good at taking direction. It's quite fascinating watching his ability to do it as a young boy, mm -hmm. five years old. He will really listen to you, and we 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 got in a way in a rhythm of being able to tell him what it was that we wanted him to do, and um we had this sort of thought that we'll speak to him like an adult, we'll speak to him like an actor, and explain mm -hmm. to him what's happening so that he's able to sort of understand a bit more rather than just going just do this and yeah. not and he doesn't get why like he he understood why he was doing stuff. Oh, okay. um, good. So he was amazing. He yeah, we were so lucky. We they were like dreams, like our little babies. Yeah rarely cried and so i know sophie, sophie was like hers cry and then but are really funny yeah. too so other than you and cesar who else is good with kids on set cat's amazing with kids she's really really good she phenomenal children yeah um sam, sam came and went <laughs> he wasn't they just they didn't love him i don't know what it was they just were but i don't know if he's big and so they were scared mm -hmm. um, uh who is it duncan's amazing as well in the 60s stuff that's like so much was improvised and the, yeah like all the lines there's loads of lines i'm saying were improvised all the running around playing around all improvised and there's loads all the stuff with robbie with your mom being thrown around and spun around like an airplane with 
Duncan with Myrta in the 60s in the finale, all mm -hmm. of you guys, like, that's just Robbie on the day was, like, in the mood to play. And so Duncan was like, oh, I'll just play with you. And so they just did. And they ran yeah. around. And um, it was planned that there would be something like that. But, like, yeah. exactly what wasn't planned. And Robbie sort of, um, I don't know, directed that, that element yeah. of it a little bit. Yeah, he All was right. great. He's amazing. All right. So I think we should just take maybe two more questions to wrap up because we've been sure. going for a bit. Um, what did you think of Marcelie as a character when you started? Um, oh, oh, that's that's fun. Can't do that. There we go. When you started uh, compared to how she's come about now. So how did I think for when she yeah. starts? It, it's funny. I, I, I only got half now. the question and it was like, so let's see. Uh, you know what? Let's do let's do another one. Have you read any? Uh, have you read any of Katrina's book club books? Oh, I need to join the book club. I just followed it. I haven't yet. Um, I, I've read some of the books that she's done, but not through the book club just yet. But I need to. Mm -hmm. I need to do that. Yeah, since she's been a part of what I've done with She's a Wreck in the podcast, um, I yeah. need to do do hers as well. But no, I haven't quite got around to doing it all yet. But I will. I will. Okay. Time now, so I will. Yeah. All right. All right. So guys, thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us. Um, we're so excited about season six. It's going to be a tough drought lander, huh? Yeah, it's going to be mad. I'm kind of glad we've left you with the resolution of, <clears throat> in some way, as much as it is a torturous affair, yeah. the whole thing. I'm glad Marsley was able to use her needle and, and kill the the piece of shit that did it um yeah because that, that feels like a bit of a re resolution for her and a full circle of who she is and yeah and her place on the ridge um <clears throat> and, and Kat I mean an incredible job and a new chapter of like where we're all gonna go and the journey yeah. of of them as a couple and the family generally um yeah I, I do feel like it's a little bit like the Sopranos but Scottish yeah um, it is so yeah so it's um it's gonna be tough, but we're all doing it. So yeah. So I think it's back. I think it's like the the better Game of Thrones. Oh, I I'll said it. it. I I'll said it. it. All I'm right. Comment, but I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're uh you're the queen of the ridge now, or or the co queen. Uh, we don't Thank want to you. take that away from Claire. Um, no. Sometimes she needs someone to kill for her, though. Yeah. Um, and Lauren, great work on season five. And Thank we you. will see you guys check out her podcast. She's a wreck. Please do. And uh, hit her up on Twitter, IG, everything. And Lauren, hopefully we'll, we'll talk again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.